So this is a little add-on video to the Stata unit to show you a little bit about Meta that goes with Stata. So first I'm going to read in some data in Meta and Stata. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to, um, yeah, file, not data, file import. I'm going to grab one of my usual CSV files. I'm going to, hey, it's right there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and maybe view full screen so I can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, and I've got my data file. Now, I can see it right here. There, I got it. Okay, now I'm going to head over to the Meta side just by typing Meta. Well, what is Meta? I hear you say. And let's let's look at this for just a second. Um, I like this little blurb over here. Actually, it's over here. I love this blurb. Um, Stata has two matrix programming language languages. One that I'm not going to talk about. The other one is Meta, and. I love this. We admit that the newer language is better in almost every way than the older language. I just love that. Uh, you can just imagine that state is lang old language is easy to use, but there's not much to learn. For heavy duty programming, it will be well worth your time to learn Meta. So let's gonna let's talk just a little bit about what Meta does. Okay, so let's see what it does. Meta. I'm there. So one dot is for Stata and two dots, the colon means you're in Meta mode. Okay, what can I do? Well, I can do Meta describe, and right now it should say nothing. I have nothing in Meta. But the whole reason I wanted to bring you over here is because you can yank your data from the other side, from the Stata side, you can yank it over, mess with it, and then when you go back, it will still be there. So here's the thing. There's uh, a couple commands. In one, this command stView, which is stata view, and the way I use this is I say z equals, let's say, I'm going to bring all the data from the other side into a variable called z, and then there's some other options which I'm just going to choose the default options. So it means take a variable z and fill it up with what's on the other side. Okay, now I'm going to say meta describe and see what happens. Oh, interesting, it's only taking 24 bytes. You should be really suspicious because it's actually not a copy. We just got a link to the other data. So everything we change on this side will change on the other side. There's another command if you just want to make a copy to play with only on the meta side, and I'll show you that one too. That would be x equals, grab the data, and the, the command looks similar, but it's not the same. It's st data instead of st view. And now I've got another copy. So from my perspective, they are going to look the same. The x and the z variables are going to look the same. But if you'll notice, the x variable takes 400,000 bytes, and the z variable takes 24, because the z variable is just a link. It's just letting us access that other data, whereas the x variable is really its own stuff. So if you want to make permanent changes to your data, do it on z. If you want to play temporarily and just see what happens, you've got yourself a copy now. Okay, so let's look at z or x. It doesn't much matter at this point because they're the same. z42, what is that? Aha, it is what it is. What about if I just want to look at a whole row? Then I just leave the second coordinate blank, and it assumes I want all of them. Oh, great. Can I see a whole column? Sure. I leave the first coordinate blank, and I fill in the second coordinate, which is 2. So I should see that whole column. Not very easy to see, is it? What if I want to see a sub-matrix? So 31 to 41, and I want to see only columns 1 to 3. It makes a little matrix, in, uh, makes a sub-matrix, and shows it to me. I can give it a name or whatever. Okay, notice there's a whole bunch of dots in column one. That's because over in column one, I have uh, categorical data. <coughs> and meta is like, that is not my 
deal that is state as deal, I'm not going to touch it. So you can deal with your own categorical variable on your own dime. I don't want to hear about it. Okay? So Meta is giving us the hand and saying talk to the hand. I don't want to hear it. Okay. So now what if we want to do something like say A is equal to 4, B is equal to 7, C is equal to 5, and then Q is equal to negative B plus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. I don't know why we'd want to do that, but maybe we want to do that. Oops, I think I lost a parenthesis there. Whoops, there we go. And what is Q? Oh, I forgot to give it a C. No, I didn't forget to give it a C. Hmm. Was I wrong about the square root? Hmm, I have an A, I have a B, I have a C. I don't have a Q. I maybe, let me try it again. What is Q? What? My demos are not supposed to fail. What is B squared? What is B squared minus 4AC? Huh? Okay, 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 okay. So apparently no imaginary numbers allowed in data science. News to me. Oh well, I guess we gotta live with it. So anyway, uh, if, if that had a root, we will probably have a value for Q. Sorry about that bad demo. Anyway, let's go on to the next bit of the demo. I wanted to show you that now that we're on the Meta side, I can create a for loop and it can, say, change something in my data. So I'm going to make a for loop like this, for i equals 1, i less than or equal to 10,000 because it's the size of my data, i plus plus. And then whatever I write next, uh, it should be iterated over all those i's. So I'm going to give myself curly braces and put stuff inside here. I'm going to make an if statement. If z i3 is less than zero. I mean, I'm just completely making this up. It is meaningless. I'm going to make more curly braces to put my statement in. If I have a single statement, I don't need to protect it in curly braces, but I'm just giving it to you to give you the feel for what your code might look like. Maybe, for whatever reason, I want to flip the sign of the Z column whenever I'm sorry, the fourth column whenever the third column is negative. I have no idea why I'd want to do that. I'm just making that up. Okay, now, this semicolon right here is to tell us, here's, here's something that is explained in full over at this website if you're interested, but you don't always need the col semicolon, but sometimes when you're typing stuff in by hand rather than from a do file, the if statement could be followed by an else clause, and Meta might choke on it because it may think that you haven't finished typing. So just as a precaution, this sometimes optional uh, semicolon can help you communicate with Meta so it knows you're done with the if statement. Okay. Now, I think I did something wrong uh, because it should be done by now and instead something is not working right. Did I finish everything off? Hmm, so I'm going to pause the video to try to find out what's wrong. Well, of course, because I had a parenthesis here that was missing, so I don't know what to do here. Uh, I think I'll just give it a parenthesis and let it choke. Okay, but at least I closed the parenthesis. Now I'm going to try this again. So what you can do is you can click on something and it will show back up again. Um, so. I tried to put an extra uh, curly brace, which was the wrong thing to do, because what was missing was a parenthesis. So there we go. There's my missing parenthesis. Let me see if I have the right number of curly braces. I think I do. Let's see if this command will work now. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to try one more thing, and if it doesn't work, I am killing this recording. I'm going to try getting out of Meta and going back in, because I don't really know what went wrong. 
I'm going to try this again. Um, well, first of all, let's make sure we didn't lose anything by going in and out. Okay, we shouldn't have lost anything, but I'm just trying to see what is the problem here. I'm going to try retyping it by hand. If I e for I equals for I equals one, I less than equal to ten thousand. All right, and then I plus plus if z i three less than zero, then I want z i four to equal to negative one times z i four. And I don't want an else clause and I'm closing my one set of curly braces now. And let me double check that I have one set of curly braces and two complete sets of parentheses. And voila, which is exactly what I was trying to do before. Anyway, so now, oh, I meant end to get back to Stata. Okay, now let's try looking at the data editor. Yay, we succeeded. So what we were trying to do, for whatever reason, I just made this up, that if this third column is negative, if the y happens to be negative, then t will get multiplied by negative 1. So of course, if it's 0, it's still going to be 0. But if it was 1, it became negative 1. OK, so I succeeded. And you got to see me struggle a little bit with that, uh, because sometimes computers are just like that. You have to try more than once to make it work right. OK, but the point I want you to come away with is that Meta is another programming environment embedded inside Stata. And if you need to do something to your data, it's often easier to hop over to the Meta side to do those manipulations. I mean, you could also just export your file to a spreadsheet and do it there. You know that. But let's say you don't feel like it and you'd rather just put everything in your do file. So maybe you're trying to um, trace your work and you'd rather just stay in one environment so you can explain yourself that way. Oh, also, every programming environment has comments. So hold on a second. OK, so right now I'm in Stata. And so we already know that we can make comments like that in Stata. But you can also do comments like this in Stata. Well, I guess I can't. I thought I could. The online help said I could. OK, so it's probably lying to me. So if I want to write comments in Stata, I go like that. But if I'm in Meta, that's not going to work. Let's try that in Meta. Choke. All right, so what do we do in Meta? And that didn't work either. And that one seemed to be OK, maybe. Hello, world. OK, so it looks like these are pretty reasonable standard C-like comments in Meta. But then in Stata, you use a single star. So anyway, uh, then I guess that's all I wanted to tell you. But I always like to exit Meta and get back to Stata. OK, so hopefully you learned something about Meta today.